Sairam students. Today we have come up with a fascinating poem that is poem number 6 and the poem name is Mist from New Voices textbook. Now this poem Mist is written by P.G. Woodhouse. Before we start with this poem, let us first understand the about the poem Sir P.G. Woodhouse. Sir Fallon Greenville Woodhouse was born on 15th October 1881. He was an English author and one of the most widely read humorists of the 20th century. Now here, humorist means a person who writes amusing stories or poems. He is also known for novels and short stories with elaborate plots and for a unique writing style. His early novels were mostly school stories but he later switched to comics fiction creating several regular characters who became familiar to the public over the years. Some of his famous works include Something Fresh and Thank You Jeeves. Alright students, let us first start with central idea of this poem. Now, this is the poem from the famous writer P.G. Woodhouse. In the first stanza, the poet writes about the setting of the poem. But soon the setting is bungled by a missed catch. Now students, setting here means the poet is talking about the atmosphere, he is talking about the environment, he is talking about the sunny day in the harvest season. Then in the second stanza, he writes about the things that distracted him like the drowning of the bee, the magic of the summer and so on. In the third stanza, the poet explains how he bungled the catch. Then, in the last two stanza, he decides not to play cricket anymore and instead he decides to play golf. Students, I will read the poem for you all according to the stanza and then I'll, I will explain each lines along with the new words. The sun in the heavens was gleaming. The breeze bore an odor of hay. My panels were spotless and gleaming. My heart was unclouded and gay. Now here in these two lines. The sun in the heavens was gleaming. The breeze bore an odor of hay. Now in these two lines we understand it was the sunny day and the breeze had filled the area or the surrounding area with the smell of hay as it was a harvest season yes and now the smell of hay shows it proves that the stadium is somewhere near the cultivating area correct now let's see ahead my flannels were spotless and gleaming my heart was unclouded and gay. Now here, students, the poet uh, was a cricketer and he wore a spotless white flannels. Now flannels here means the cricketer's white dress. And the poet is trying to say that this dress is spotless and it was gleaming, which means that the dress was shining. And he also says that he is not worried about the match being played. In fact, he was very happy with the atmosphere. Now students, let's learn new words from these four lines. The first one is flannel. Flannel means the dress worn by cricketers. Next is beaming. Beaming means smiling broadly. Then is bore. Bore means drill. After that is hay. Hay means dry grass of wheat, rice, etc. Then is gleaming. Gleaming means reflecting light. After that is unclouded. Unclouded means 
not worried. Then the last one is gay. Gay means cheerful. Now let's read further. The ladies all gaily apparel sat round looking on at the match. In the treetops the dicky birds caroled. All was peace till I bungled that catch. Now students, in the first two lines the ladies all gaily apparelled sat round looking on at the match. Means all the ladies were well dressed and were in the gallery to watch the match. Now let's read the next lines. In the treetops the dicky birds caroled. All was peace till I bungled that catch. Yes. Now here the poet is trying to say that on the tree the birds were singing and they were watching. It would have been the perfect day. Everything was fine. It would have been the perfect day according to the poet. But something suddenly went wrong and the poet had missed the catch. Now let's see some new words. Gaily. Gaily means cheerful or well. Appareled. Appareled means dressed. So here gaily appareled means well dressed. Then is caroled. Caroled means sang. Then is bungle. Bungle means mess up or ruined. Students, overall in the first stanza we understood that it was a sunny day. The breeze filled the gallery with the smell of hay. It was a harvest season and the stadium was located near an area of cultivation. The poet was a cricketer and he wore spotless white cricketer's dress. He was not worried about the match being played. Ladies sat in the gallery watching the match progressing and the birds were singing. It would have been a perfect day, but something went wrong. Understand the second stanza. My attention, the magic of summer, had learned from the game which was wrong. The bee that invigorate hummer was droning its favorite song. Now here, student, we understand that the, that the poet was asking whom to blame. For, the, for his missed catch. He was asking, was it the magical summer? Yes, the player thought it was the magic of summer that distracted the player's attention from the game. Now let's read the next one. Now let's look at the next two lines. The bee that invigorate Hummer was droning its favorite song. Now here we understand that, that the bee was disturbing the player uh, the one who was playing by buzzing its favorite song. Alright students, now let's understand the new words in these four lines. The first one is learn. Learn means attract. Then the next one is inviterate. Inviterate means disturbing. Then is droning. Droning means buzz. Now let's move ahead. I was tenderly dreaming of Clara. On her, not a girl is a patch. When, ah, horror, there soared through the air, a uh, decidedly possible catch. Now here, we understand that the poet was lovingly dreaming of Clara. He feels that she is something different and nobody can match her. He feels that uh, she is the most beautiful girl in the world. And then suddenly he had heard the word ah, which shows that he has definitely missed the catch. Now students, let's look at the new words in this stanza. Tenderly. Tenderly means lovingly. The next is patch. Patch means match. Then is sword. Sword means fly. After that is decidedly. Decidedly means definitely. So, 
Overall, in the second stanza, we understood that the poet thinks whom to blame. Was it the magical summer that distracted the player's attention? Or was it the bee's humming sound that disturbed him? Or was it the thought of Clara that distracted the player's mind due to which he had missed the easy catch? Now let's understand the third stanza. I heard in a stupor the baller emit a self-satisfied hour. The small boys who sat on the roller set up an expectant hurrah. Now in the first two line, I heard in a stupor the baller emit a self-satisfied ah means here the poet feels that he had achieved the catch so the baller emits emits means he utters he utters the word ah in happiness now let's understand further the small boys who sat on the roller set up an expectant hurrah now here we understand some children who were watching the game, they expressed their joy by saying hurrah as they felt that their team was winning because they felt that the poet has taken the catch. Now let's understand the new word. Stupor. Stupor means unable to think. The next is baller. Baller means a member of the fielding side who is balling then is emit emit means utter or shout then is self-satisfied self-satisfied means feeling extremely satisfied now let's understand further the batsman with grief from the picket himself he began to detach and I uttered a groan and turned sick it was over I had buttered the catch. Now here, in the first two lines, the batsman with grief from the wicket, himself he began to detach. It means that the batsman thought that he that it was a catch and he is out now. So he began to leave the pitch and the baller was also excited as he thought it was a catch. Then in the next two lines, and I uttered a groan and turned sick. It was over. I had buttered the catch. It means that the baller's excitement was given up and he was disappointed as he had missed the very easy catch. Now students, let's learn and understand few new words. The first one is grief. Grief means sorrow. The next is groan. Groan means murmur. Then is wicked. Wicked means each of the set of three stumps. After that is buttered. Buttered means miss a catch. Now students, in the third stanza, we overall understood that the poet was just about to catch. And so, looking at the scene, the baller started expressing his happiness and he, and he said, ah. Some children who were uh, also watching the game, they expressed their joy saying hurrah as they thought that, that they are the winner and their team is going to win now. Even the batsman was very sad. He thought that he has lost the match and he was just about to leave the pitch. Suddenly when he heard the sound of happiness, he understood that the batsman is the winner and the poet has missed the catch. Now students, let's understand the fourth stanza. Oh ne'er if I live to a million, shall I feel such a terrible pang? From the seats on the far off pavilion, a loud yell of ecstasy rang. Now students, in the first two line, Oh ne'er if I live to a million, shall I feel such a terrible pang? Now here, the poet shows the depth of his sadness. He feels that he has done a terrible job by dropping the easy catch. He feels the pain and he feels if it happens to live for a million years, then this pain will be with him throughout his life. Now let's understand further.
from the seat on the far off pavilion a loud yell of ecstasy rang now here the poet sees that from the pavilion that is from the theater people with the opposite team were shouting and yelling in joy as the poet has missed the catch and the opposite team is the winner now students let's understand few new words the first one ner ner means never then is pang pang means pain after that is pavilion pavilion means an area for refreshment in a cricket ground then is ecstasy ecstasy means joy now let's move ahead by the hand pull my hair which is a burn i tore with a wrench from my thatch and my heart was seared deep with the raw burn at the thought that i had fuzzled that catch now here student in these two lines by the handful my hair which is a burn i tore with a wrench from my thatch is expressing the sad feeling of the poet after missing that catch it shows that his heart was deeply full with anger and so he pulled out his ha hair now let's understand further and my heart was seared deep with a raw burn at the thought that i had pulled all that catch now here we understand that the poet was in deep sorrow when the poet was in deep sorrow he missed the easy catch here the raw burn means uh, he was extremely in anger by himself as he could puzzle that catch puzzle here means uh, miss the catch students let's understand few new words from this four lines a burn a burn means red hair then is wrench wrench means pull out after that is puzzled puzzled means mess up or miss then is thatched thatch means hair after that is seal seal means burn overall in this fourth stanza we understood that the poet shows his depth of sadness he feels that he has done a terrible job by missing the easy catch he thinks if it happens to live for million years then the pain will be with him throughout his life and he does not want to carry this terrible pain here the poet heart was filled with raw burn that is anger and sadness so in anger he just pulled his hair to express his sadness now let's understand the fifth stanza ah uh, the bowler low querulous mutter points loud unforgettable score oh give me my driver and putter hence forward my game shall be golf now here in the first two line ah uh, the bowler low querulous mutter points loud unforgettable score now here student can you guess what happened if your teammate does not perform well in the cricket match yes of course they will get angry similarly here the poet was criticized by his teammate for missing the easy catch oh give me my driver and putter hence forward my game shall be golf here when the poet was scolded by his teammate he was really disappointed and he finally decided that he will not play cricket anymore and he will play golf now let's understand some new words querulous querulous means criticizing then is scoff scoff means ridicule after that it is hence forward hence forward means year after then is driver driver means golf club and putter also means golf club now this driver and putter looks something like this all right students now let's understand further if i am asked to play cricket here after i am wholly determined to scratch lights void of all pleasure and laughter i bungle the easiest catch now here at the first two line if i am asked to play cricket here after i am wholly determined to scratch 
means the poet was extremely disappointed now and now he says even if somebody in future ask him to play cricket he will firmly reject to play this game as his past experience was not good now in the next line life's void of all pleasure and laughter i bungled the easiest catch now when the poet bungles the easiest catch and was disappointed he now feels that his life was empty of any pleasure and laughter and he was not actually willing to leave the game of cricket but was unhappy due to criticism so unhappily he decided that he will not play cricket anymore and he will play golf now let's understand some new words scratch scratch means reject then is void void means without so students Overall, in the fifth stanza, we understood that when the poet has missed the easy catch, he was criticized by his team friend. He was so disappointed that he finally decides to drop this game and play golf. He even says, if somebody in future will ask him to play cricket, he will firmly reject to do so. And now he believes that his life is empty of any pleasure and laughter. All right, students. We will stop this session here, and will continue with the value points, literary devices used in this poem, the rhyme scheme, and reference to the context in our next online session. And yes, students. At the end of this video, below there is a link given, wherein you have to click the link and submit your answers in the worksheet. Okay, Saira, take care.